Behind the Wall, the official podcast of West Tigers. Well, good day and welcome to uh, episode 47 of Behind the Raw, the official podcast of West Tigers, where we give it to you straight and where we learn more about the people and the stories behind this great club. And Behind the Raw is proudly sponsored by PWA, that is Pro Wrestling Australia. Timmy Grant's our special guest. We'll talk more about him. Uh, you follow your wrestling at all? When I was a kid, I did. I followed a little bit of WWE, but um, not since I've grown up. You'd go all right in the ring, I think. I mean, you're still looking in, in good shape. Oh, they, um, Grayson, Grayson Waller, he won SmackDown, the tag team championship. That was at WrestleMania 40, right? So he is, it all began for him with our sponsors, PWA. So he's on show uh, on Friday. It's the spectacular Spiegel tent at the entertainment quarter. Um, so that's Friday the 19th. That's uh, as they present Ringmasters. Head along if you want. I'll Grassroots get you some- Wrestling. We can get along there. We yeah. are, we've got some pull with PWA. All belts are on the line as well. Um, so it's a really big show, isn't it? It's under the under the big top. Um, if you don't want that, do you want some? You, you I can get some tickets. Yeah. We'll talk to my people. Yeah, yeah. But if our listeners want some tickets, uh, you have to fork out. They're not overly expenses, expensive. They're available now at oztix.com.au. You just um, search Ringmasters. So being presented by Pro Wrestling Australia. Well, as I was just about to say, this week's guest, um, he's got a fair resume, hasn't he? He played 196 NRL games, uh, two games for New South Wales for the Blues in, that was a 2012 Origin Series, eight seasons with Penny Panthers, uh, making his NRL debut with them in 2007. One season with uh, the Bunnies, that didn't quite work out. Not quite sure why, I'll ask you about that. Then three seasons, so you went from the Bunnies to West Tigers, three seasons here, 46 six games it says you played uh, and then you went back to the the Panthers for that uh, last season where uh, he hung up his boots uh, midway through uh, 2019 a very warm welcome again to uh, to Timmy Grant thanks for joining us mate thanks for having me mate Alice, you, you've been here now for uh, back here as in your current role in the wellness space um well, it's a bit over a year now would that be about right how, how have you settled in how you enjoy yeah it? so I was lucky enough to uh, be part-time for pretty much the first year, um, two days a week, and then I've just come in full time as of February. So it's been good. It's been good to get back. Um, I feel like it's amongst my people. I, yep. I spent four years away from the game. First two years, sort of detached myself to figure out who I actually was, other than just a footy player, to uh, explore mm. my identity a little bit. And mm. um, yeah, I sort of it was exciting at first, but um, you know, I just the. When I walked back in here two days a week, it, it felt like I could breathe again and I was around my people, so to speak. And yep. mate, I love, um, you know, when I was working in the mines, I've been, I was working in the mines for four years. and That was after you retired? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I hated the thought of going back to work. And um, I can honestly say every day here, I, I drive up the M4 and my, my brain's just working in overdrive about what we can mm. do, what we can do better. And I feel like I've got a purpose. We'll talk all about that um, in the middle chunk of, of the program because I want to learn more about you know the wellness space and how it impacts performance and if you struggled when you you hung up your boots mm. as I, I think I'm here and you may have through through what you're just saying yeah there. yeah um, well, I appreciate you, you jumping in so how this works I don't know if you've you've tuned into any of the the I, I've subscribed mate don't worry good yeah if you want to subscribe you know what to do you just click on the uh, the bell icon down there and uh, you'll never miss a beat right you'll get all the notifications. Um, how this works then, we'll have a set of six, so we're going to learn a bit more about you uh, in the middle part of the program. We are going to talk um, about some footy, obviously, but more the connection, I think, yep. between footy and, and well-being. Yep. Yeah? Um, so I'll, I'll look forward to at the back end of the program with a couple of minutes. See the clock up there? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, we're gonna you're gonna jump off the ropes, right? Turnbuckle time. Thanks to our sponsors, PWA, and we've got a quick quiz there. Top scores twenty five points. Who was it? Don't say Skando. Well, no, Joel Kane is yeah. is there. So he's but, a numbers man, but yeah, yeah. But there's there have been some um, a few emails to uh, to BTR, and you can get across us on the Insta and the, and the socials as well. We sh- we technically gave him points for a question, and and he didn't really get it. Yeah. So it could go down to a, to a count back. Anyway, don't worry about that. Yeah, we'll yeah. deal with that, cross that bridge when we get to it. Before we dive into the opening set of six, um, let's go through a, a bit of club news, and there's plenty happening as well. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, it's a disappointing 
result against the Dragons last weekend at Campbelltown. Huge crowd, and it was great to see the place um, full of so many people. We looked a bit flat. Benji, to, you know, to quote him, he said it was probably the, well, the worst performance of the team this year. And I know that he also, you know, he he wanted the team to, to sort of bring the crowd into the game and probably didn't happen as, as, as often as we would have liked. There have been several changes made, though, for this weekend's game against the Panthers in Bathurst. Uh, Johnny Bateman comes back in. Samuel Fainu comes back in on the bench. Um, Latu Fainu is back from that hamstring niggle. He's on the bench as well. And Lockie Galvin comes straight back in, um, and he'll wear the number six. Also, Nato, great to see him back in the team. Um, he had off-season surgery, a lot of surgery, actually. So he's worked his way back there uh, against his former club. Um, so I look forward to seeing NATO having a good uh, a good clash this weekend uh, in Bathurst. Um, that's all at Carrington Park, by the way, and that was the scene of that epic victory last year, round eight, round nine, whatever it was, where it ended seven straight losses. Uh, you you were on board, were you, at that time, Timmy? Um, yeah, I was. I was on on board at part time, but um, I actually did a promo that night in Penrith with. Um another former ex-Tiger, Malachi, and um, yeah. I actually uh, backed us in as well. So I, I looked at it, the form in uh, yeah. Bathurst, wet pitch, and um, yep. I said to an old fellow, it was, at, it was at a pub, and I said to it in Mount Drew, and I said to an old fellow, I said, mate, we'll bring it home here. And our odds actually went up. So mm. the, the the price actually went up at half time when we were ahead. Yeah. So I said, it's money for jam, mate. So Money um, for jam. He, he's whacked 50 on it, and um, I think he got 400 back. So It was, it was one of those... Um so almost where were you moments? It was just an epic victory. We were building to that though. I think you mean a couple of weeks prior to that. I think we had a pretty good performance from the Eels from memory. Oh, I'm not quite sure, but it was it was sort of building. Anyway, let's hope we can go there. We obviously like the venue. I don't know what the weather forecast is. Um, this weekend also, uh, our New South Wales Cup and Jersey flag teams, they're both playing the Panthers uh, at Blue Bet Stadium. So that's on Saturday afternoon. Well, actually, the flag kick off at quarter past 11. And then New South Wales Cup, the Maggies, they are playing at 1 p.m. So that's at Blue Bet Stadium. Now, you're going to have to spread yourself pretty thin because also on Saturday uh, at Leichhardt Oval, um, we've got the semi finals for our Harold Matthews, West Magpies Harold Matthews team. And uh, our Lisa Fiola under-17s, the girls' team, they're in action as well. Um, the Mats boys, they've gone through the whole season unbeaten, um, but they are yet to play Cronulla, who they play this weekend. And the Sharkies finished fourth on the ladder. Um, as I say, the Lisa Fiola Cup girls, they're against the Illawarra Steelers, um, who lost just one game in the regular season, finishing second on the ladder. We finished uh, fifth, I think the under-17s, a good weekend, a good win, rather, at Leichhardt last weekend. I popped in to see that against the Central Coast Roosters. Um, so that match, the girls, that kicks off at 12.30 following the uh, the Harold Mats, which is at 11 a.m. at Leichhardt. So if you can, get on out there. Get on and support both those under-17s at Leichhardt. And just a quick look ahead, too, um, while we're at it, for next weekend, um, another big crowd is expected at Campbelltown Stadium, uh, our 25th anniversary match against uh, against the Broncos. Wow, how things have, have flown. Um, 24 all, do you remember that very first game West Tigers played? A, a real special time of the year. Uh, it's the um, Anzac round, obviously, and an opportunity for all of us, um, I guess, to pay our respects to, to service men and women who have served and who are currently serving our country and New Zealand as well. So all three grades will be in action next weekend. Um, the flag, the cup, and the NRL. So look forward to that. The Magpies play the Bears in the New South Wales Cup. That's a three o'clock kickoff. That's next weekend. And Jersey flag, they're taking on Melbourne Storm. Um, so that's Saturday, 27th of April. Um, they take on the Storm at 1.20. Oh, 27th of April. It's a huge day. It's my daughter's birthday. Happy birthday, go. Matilda, there for, for um, the 27th of April. All righty, Timmy, uh, you ready to rock and roll? Ready to go? Absolutely. Okay, let's wind back the clock. It is... Friday the 4th of May, 2007. You make your NRL debut off the bench for the Panthers. You're playing the Dragons at Cogra. Yep. Oki. Oki, Jubilee, yeah. Cogra. Okay, if you say Oki. Uh, referee, do you remember who that was? Couldn't tell you. Sean Hampstead. Yeah, I knew, didn't think you would. Sean Hampstead. And listen up, there is the whistle. 
off. Run away. Righto. Um, that that day, your NRL debut. Yep. Do you, what, do you remember much about it? How old were you? Uh, 18, 19, mm. something like that. Um, I remember I remember parts of it. I like Obviously, I remember how Matty Elliott told me. It was very formal. He pulled me into the uh, – we were in the gym, and he just said, uh, take a seat on the shoulder press. And um, he said I'd be making my debut. And, mate, it, it was um, – it's hard to describe that feeling, you know, as a, as a kid, just, I used to go to Penrith park, um, and just watch in awe of, of the Panthers. Um, mm. I actually followed Newcastle as a kid, but Penrith was my team. It's where I grew up. And just from day one, I just, I don't know, I, Newcastle was my team, but Panthers were my club. And I just always wanted to wear that Jersey. And to get the opportunity to do that, um, mm. it was a boyhood dream for sure. Mm. So you've, you know exactly how these young kids feel now when we celebrate yeah. debutants that have come through and you know what 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 they're going through um and that i imagine really helps in your role take us through your path to the nrl then your junior footy and and when you started thinking you know what i'm i'm pretty good at this game yeah i don't think i, I ever thought gee i'm pretty good at this game it was more i love this game and i love watching nrl one day i'd love to be there um Probably wasn't as skillful as some guys in my team. You know, I played with guys like Michael Jennings since I was a kid. So he was in my team from... What club was that? St. Mary's, uh, yeah. right through to NRL origin, that sort of stuff. So I'd have a look around the room and um, probably didn't have the talent them guys had, but I knew that I, I, I loved the game and I knew that I'd give it everything I had and, you know, I was willing to go to places where um, some guys weren't. And I, I just knew that that, that would be my edge. So... Mm. I um, mate, I, I didn't ever think, gee, I'm destined to be an NRL player. I was, I was no, more how to get there. So there must have become a point when you were in your teens, when you're making the rep teams, and you th then it must have suddenly dawned on you. Well, you know what, I could perhaps take this seriously as a profession. Yeah, I, I think um, my first Harold Matt season, uh, sixteen, I left school, fifteen, started plumbing apprenticeship. Did you? Yeah, and I was um, getting picked up at like 5.30 in the morning and my boss at the time, I, you know, literally dig holes all day and my boss was dropping me off at, at uh, training, Harold Match training and I was only a kid, I was 16 and mm. I'd rock up with work boots on and, you know, that blue plumber's glue all over me and, you know, mm. I'm doing sewer chokes and that sort of stuff and I started doing, doing all right, you know, all the fitness drills and that sort of stuff and it was tough back then. The, the motto was we'll train you until we break you and then whoever comes through will we'll do all right, you know, and... I just, you know, I was sort of midway of the pack and then I was starting to be at the front of the pack in the fitness sort of stuff. And I don't know, I just, I felt like maybe that is my, that is my angle is just be, be tough and just relentless, you know, just hang in there and see, mm. see what happens. Well, it must have been tough. We're up to tackle three in the opening set of six, but just, just breaking away from that. A full day's work, young kid, 15, full day doing the plumbing and all and digging the holes and yeah. You must have been. I can imagine you you packing the sandwiches into you about three or four o'clock before training. Yeah, and, yeah, banana sandwiches. Mate, it was a weird one because my boss and that obviously I was only fifteen, sixteen, but you know tradies they they have a the old long neck after after they've been digging holes True. in that. So, mate, I was just thinking, oh, I won't be doing that, and then running hills at uh, Hickey's Lane. I won't be doing that. But well, you could. You know, I, was, I probably had pack a day smokes from passive smoking back then. But um, yeah, it was just. That's how it was. I didn't know any difference. That was yeah, sweet. Hard work. Um, Timmy, after retirement, how – I touched on it earlier. How did you adjust to the, the, I guess, the real world? Yeah, well, if anyone talks to me about the real world and, you know, when you're playing footy, they're like, well, wait until you're in the real world you'll get a dose of reality, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm not saying it like the real world's not tough because I, I know how the economy and that sort of stuff is. There's some families that work really hard and they're doing it tough, but – for me, the real world's a lot easier than the rugby league world. Um, and, and that's from all sorts of things, pressure, internal pressure. And when I talk internal pressure, it's the pressure in your own head that you put on yourself, uh, the expectations that you put on yourself. And then you've got, you know, in, in normal jobs, you get biannually, biannual reviews and that sort of stuff. These guys get, you know, reviewed every single day, nearly every single tackle, everything they do. So for me, the, the real world, so to speak, was a lot easier. Um, but with that comes a lot of other things about identity and lack of purpose. And you start to start to question things a bit. Yeah. When, when did you find yourself entering the, you know, the wellbeing space and, and into the, the line of work you're in now? Yeah, well, it was, it was, I guess it was just from um, the processes that, 
go on within the game. So I finished up at Penrith and Kevy Kingston, shout out to him, he was my captain back mm. in the day and um, we, we kept in contact. And a part of the NRL protocol is whoever finishes at the club, the wellbeing manager stays in contact. And now we've got the RLPA that do that through the transition groups, um, Joey Nullivan and the boys. But I just caught up with a coffee with uh, Kevy Kingston and he goes, where are you at? And um, we'll chat and he goes, mate, I think you'd be really good in the wellbeing space. And um, so I just signed up to do this course. I didn't think much mm. of it. And, the, you know, I was a, I was a bit uh, inhibited to do a bit of study, to be honest, because unfortunately I hadn't picked up a pen and paper or laptop or anything for the last nearly 15 years. So mm. there was that hurdle to overcome, but um, I, I wanted different than what the situation I was in. So I started doing an online course um, in elite athlete wellbeing. And then the more I did it, the more I found a bit of passion for it and mm. sort of wanted to give back. My way of giving back was to sort of pass on my experiences of, you know, I've had some great experiences in the game. I've had mm. some great opportunities with the money I've earned. And the flip side of that was there's a few mistakes that I made, um, both with how I reacted to things and mm. probably investments at some times where, you know, I could have done a little bit better and that sort of stuff. So for me to give back now is, I'm not a I'm not a Benji Marshall or Robbie Farrer or guys like that where they can sit down and coach someone uh, on how to play the game. I, I can just pass on my knowledge and experiences from myself, what I learned and what I sh would have done better mm. or from the guys around me that I've seen. I've seen some horror stories and I've seen some huge success stories as mm. well. So that's my way of giving back now. I like it. Uh, away from footy. Now, I, I, I don't know you well. Um, I hear that you're... you're what else? You're a bit of a green thumb. Yeah, I'll, oh, mate. That's my um. That's my out. So um, I pretend we're pruning roses. What are we doing? Oh, mate. I'm into the hedges, lawns, all that sort of stuff. So I actually, um, you know, my partner, she she's the best. She keeps the house inside nice and tidy. So you do outside. Yeah, but I, I play on that. I, you know, it's been <laughs> a bit of a job and that. But that's that's my uh, that's my game of golf. So I love just mowing the lawns and doing the hedges and that sort of stuff, mate. I just love tinkering around the backyard and. Mate, that's that's I'm happy. Do the lawns, yeah, like Augusta or what? Oh, they're, they're, it's soft leaf buffalo, so it's not nice. not quite a, quite a green, but um, <laughs> listen to yeah, it, yeah, the it's, old um, soft leaf buffalo. I do my best. Mm. I'm a bit of a hack, but I do my best. Yeah, no, nice, nice, nice. Um, all right, well, last Hampstead's got the finger in the air. Uh, a bit about your family life. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so older brother, two years older. Um, he mom, played footy, did he? He did, but. He uh, he took the other fork in the road, you know. He, he liked a beer and a party and that sort of stuff. And I guess for me, I wanted to take it serious. And he just played footy for why we all first start, right? He's yeah. just hang around your mates, have a good time. Mm. Um, but he, he's gone down other avenues and he, he's done all right for himself. So um, he, he was a decent footy player, actually, but didn't really have that next level in him or he just didn't want to commit that next mm. level. But um, Mate, grew up in a footy-loving family. Um, my mum and dad, we always, Origin was bigger than Christmas at my house, so we'd all sit around the TV and, mate, we'd be praying for fights and that sort of stuff back in the days when you could do that. And um, yeah, it's funny because you hear uh, now, it's like, oh, you know, mums don't want to see that for their kids and that. And my mum was there, like, egging it on. So, um, <laughs> but me some staunch footy family. My grandma used to, um, she was a nurse and my dad played bush footy and she'd stitch the boys up after the game and that, no local anaesthetic and that sort of stuff. So, it is just, it runs through our blood, yeah. God, a bit like Rambo, first blood. <laughs> Stitched himself bit up, didn't he? A bit different back then, yeah. But. What about that? So you're watching with your grandma and the whole family watching Origin back in the day. You're only a kid and, and who would have known you'd be out there playing Origin at some point in time. We'll, we'll chat about your Origin. Yeah. Um, well, that that is, Timmy, that's the opening set of six. Too easy. Jeez, you're a long Got one. through it. Yeah, a long one, wasn't it? Super, okay. super set. How's the heart rate? Nuts. Nah, good. You ain't seen nothing like this. Pro Wrestling Australia presents Ringmasters at the Sydney Spiegel Tent, Friday, April 19. Tickets available now on Oztix. PWA Ringmasters. This ain't no three ring circus. Uh, well, let's talk a bit of footy, right? Yep. And and again, well-being, because I yep. find it fascinating. And I, I hope our, our listeners, viewers get a real insight. It's so important. And we'll, yep. we'll touch on that in a moment, right? Because you see it day in, day out. Absolutely. How you can help people. Yep. Through your experiences, yeah? Um, just, just just on footy though, back to the Dragons game at Campbelltown. The joint's heaving. Um, the team looked flat. Did you, did you notice it sort of from the outset? When, when did you, you sort of say, hang on, I, I don't think they're, they're on? Um, I didn't really like, 
you know, I, I look at it from an optimistic lens. If yeah. the boys are so called flat, I, I might see that as the boys are calm, they're confident, like we're doing all right yeah, here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't our best performance, but I still look at it from where we've come from mm. and where we want to head as a club. Mm. I still see massive wins in that game through um, yeah, just just reflecting back on attitude and I don't think we've ever given up. Like And, and on the weekend, I don't no. think there was a give up. No, um, no. And, and there's been times where we probably would have, uh, queuing the rack. like Last you know, year. Yeah, and, and probably if we had it as unlimited time, you know, I think, you know, we would have still kept punching and mm. and we could have come home, you know. I think the, the Dragons would have been worried there for a little bit. And mm. we, we didn't play our best footy, but mm. we didn't give up and right to the end, the boys were still in there. So if you look at it, you know, I, I'm a part of the club, but I'm also a fan as well. So I look at it and think, gee, we didn't get the two points. Where do we sit mm. on the table and this and that? But the long-term view of where we want to head as this club, I think there's there were still wins in that for us, the small little wins that we have to take on board, but mm. we want to win now as well. Oh, no way. Well, yeah, like I just think that compared to the other games, um, just there the, the didn't appear to be that energy that, that I've seen so far. This team will never give up, mate. Yeah. They will never give up. I think yeah, I think we know that, yeah. right? Um, but anyway, that that was them. They've, they've and that feeling, that. I think that feeling is great because mm. that goes to show that there's a new level of higher standard within the club. If if we were disappointed and we were still hanging in there, and that, mm. that that's the high, the bar's been risen, and mm. that, that's a positive. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell tell us a bit more about your role then. You you your day to day role here. How, what's it entail as I don't know. I'm sure what's on the business card is it head of well-being. Well, you are. You you run on the, the well-being department. Yeah, mate. It, it it can be from anything to um, guys rocking in here. It's very very based off rapport. Um, you know, it's about building trust and respect. And I I just want to be that guy um, that the boys know they can call anytime. Mm. I don't care if you call me at two a.m. and you need something. I'll answer it and. If I don't know, if I haven't got the professional skills to help you, I'll point you in the right direction. But I want the guys and anyone in, within this building to feel safe enough to have trust in me that, one, what they tell me is confidential or mm. the help they need, and two, we get them the help that they need. Um, and that might be, gee, I'm not sleeping right because, you know, I've my kids have been up all night and they're crook or whatever, or it might be, beyond that like there's been some stories and mm. not not just in this club but across the game where you know they need professional help that's great we've got avenues to, to help them with that but a lot of guys um in footy you grow up as tough tough people and yeah. we're breaking that stigma down through through society's actually breaking it down but back in the back in the day you'd just be like get on with it get on with it until it's too much where mm. now um the nrl's invested a lot of money into it the rpa and it's actually something the players have wanted this space and we've got the mate, we've got that many resources to help them but not many players and mm. society won't go and knock on a psychologist door or a sleep specialist or but they'll go to someone that they can mm. you know respect and trust have a conversation and then I can say oh have you thought about this or mm. and just guide them guide them in that spot and Sometimes, a lot of the time, it's not even send them on to a professional. Sometimes they just need to have a chat. And yeah. that's where I, you know, I say to the boys, don't ever be hesitant on telling me something because if I haven't done it myself, I've heard someone that's done it, I've seen it mm. through teammates and that, you know, like spent a long time in the game and I've ridden the roller coaster. And to be honest, it's, um, there's probably more times digging yourself out and showing, you know, coming back from adversity than the good times. Um, you know, some players have great runs where they just, they're winning all the time and everything's great and they hardly get injured. But then there's other guys that, you, you know, you, you've got to have resolve and dig yourself out a lot of the time. And how do you do that? You, we all need support and just having someone there that they can lean on. Um, that's what's important to me. Mm, yeah. Um, in a nutshell, Timmy, what, how important is mental well-being? in terms of its impact on player performance, do you think? Yeah, well, it's, you know, there's, there's holistically, there's like nine dimensions of well-being that um, there's, in, in my view, there's no such thing as like, oh, you're, 
your mental health. Like everyone's got mental health. Mm. It, it, you could be, you know, thriving and everything's great. And then you might be, you know, need a bit of help. And it, and it works a bit like the traffic light system. That's how the mental health continuum works. But that can change daily. It can change hourly, like the, the, the depths of it, you know. Mm. And then some some things where you, it might have impact on your family and that, that's when you, you really – worry about it but things like getting dropped or losing games or bad reviews and that that happens daily so being able to be aware of your emotions and your feelings and being able to either deal with them or talk about it get help and share and Mm. converse in them sort of feelings it's so important because there's actually been studies and the nrl have invested so much money into um studies around like work work life balance of in get an identity outside of rugby league. So we've got guys that do a lot of study. Um, Brent Naden, actually, he's back this week, but he's been spending time on an excavator. And uh, the company that are putting him through his license has actually rang me and said, mate, he's actually a natural. He's killing it. So has on his he, days off... Hasn't sapped his energy. Mate, he, he's, yeah, he's, he's got plenty of that. But on his days off, he's been learning how to use it, you know, heavy machinery, That's excavators good, eh? and mm. trucks and all sorts of things. And then we've got other guys that, you know, are in university degrees. And um, there's some guys that, seek mentors and sort of working backwards of, of career mm. exploration and that. So, mate, it's, there's so many well, That never happened 20 years ago, right? You finish nah. your football and then you suddenly thought, shit, well, yeah. what do I do now? But now it's a prerequisite, right? The NRL is very big on making sure these guys have a, not a plan B, but a, or a plan P, yeah. post footy. Yeah, and it's one of them things that a lot of the time we don't get to finish on our own terms or say, you know, I've had, a, had enough. It usually comes from lack of opportunity, you run out of opportunity, injuries, um, so many different factors where if we've built a few things along the way, you're, you're better placed to, to transition than what you would have been if you'd done nothing. And it's one of those things, it's like society think, oh, once you've made it to the NRL, you're set for life. Um, you know, probably, I don't know the exact number, but it would be lower than 5%, you know, by the time you're, you know, you pay your taxes, pay management fees and your own super and that sort of stuff. And then, you know, you buy a nice house and you're paying your interest and that, like it, it you still got to work after it. The, the bills keep coming in. And mm. I say to the players, it doesn't matter if you're on a, you know, hundred grand or a million dollars, um, money's one thing, but also education's a currency. And the only thing that the currency gives you is op- uh, options. So when you're retired, do you want to have to go do something you hate? Or do you want that flexibility of doing something you love? And that's the difference for me. So that's soft landing post footy. That's good advice, Timmy. Uh, we've got a really young squad. And I would hazard a guess, uh, I should have these stats. I reckon we've got the youngest squad in the NRL. There you go. Yeah, it'd be very, very close, close to it. Yeah. How, um, and the, these young kids, some of them, a lot of them, in fact, are fresh out of school. Yeah. They just started shaving, some of them. And suddenly they're, They've got more money in their pocket than they've ever had. Yep. It's a whole transition for them, isn't it? This new way of life. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, rugby league, the, the beautiful thing about rugby league is we're, we're a blue-collar game. So a lot of these guys, they might be the first person in their family to go and get a mortgage and buy a house or this sort of stuff, you know. I'm not, I'm not saying that everyone's like that, but there's it's such a broad demographic. Well, I think Sam Weller and, and Latu just bought – their parents' house last weekend or a couple of weekends ago. Yeah, and that's that's a massive Beautiful. that's a massive thing for them boys. You know, it's it's such a win for us, um, not just as a club and as a team, but as a game. Like that's that's amazing, and and that's credit to them guys as well. And now now there's a there's a lot of hard work between now and when they finish playing, so they can set themselves up to one, you know, provide for their family, but mm. also provide for themselves as well. Mm. Um, I imagine all players are di- – well, I not imagine. I know all players are different and they react differently. You probably see some players might need a shoulder to lean on from time to time. Others might be, you know, probably a bit like myself. No, I'm all right. I'm just, you know, doing my own thing. But – and some of the issues that might impact on performance. Like it might just be some – they're having issues away from footy. Yep. Um, might be having problems with the – their partner, maybe, yeah, you know, disagreements, financial problems, or, or whatever. Then there's the injury side of things, and I can't imagine what Adam Dewey has gone through in the last few years. Yeah. Um, so there, it's almost a one stop shop. You, you, do you sort of know when to maybe approach one of the players and say, "Listen, why don't you come have a chat?" Or do you wait for them to come to you? 
Um, I, I like to build it off rapport and and getting to know the boys. Mm. You know, like um, there, there's signs of um, if you need to check in, that's for sure. Um, but there, it, it just depends, and you, you got to know your players, and it's got to be, be built off respect, rapport, um, honesty. There's so many things, and it, it takes time to build, right? But mm. um, you know, we, we've got a great squad here that are very engaged in the wellbeing space, and for me, it's made my job a lot easier. Um, but in saying that, we sort of I don't like meetings and saying, oh, you got to come see me and this and that. I just yeah. like to do it organically and mm. just, yeah, share stories and just be there for support. I tell you what, they are a really happy bunch. And you know, I've been around footy clubs for donkey's years. They are a really happy and they seem really connected. Yeah. And, and you and know, a lot what? of that I think is, is down to the, 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 the senior coaches leading them as well. Yeah. And, and hats off to the, to the boys and the coaching staff as well. Everyone in the organization, I've, We've been for a bit, and and I was here around last year, but yep, I never walked through the door, and it was like uh, you you were attending a wake or something like that. There was, there was always optimism, and the boys were always working hard. You come upstairs, and all the staff were working hard. Um, there is a great feel in the place, so we'll keep keep working hard. And when the when the day comes where we get the fruits of the labour, it's going to be very sweet. And that's for the fans as well. They've been around a long time, mm. and um, it, there's been a great culture to be honest. That's for sure. Mm. Um, and obviously confidential, you know, what you do and yep. I don't want you to mention any players' names here, but <clears throat> has there been a, a, a player, let, let's call him player X, shall we? Yep. Um, that, that has benefited from your advice, your support, and you've seen him go on to, to achieve things that maybe he wouldn't have achieved had he have not. I don't know, opened up to you? Yeah, I, mate, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't sit here and say I've, I've claimed something like that. I'm not asking you to blow your own trumpet, but you know yeah. you've impacted um, positively. Yeah, absolutely. So in, instead of just saying like a player's player X or whatever has mm. benefited from it, um, I'd like to like revert back to I, I know stories of guys that have, you know, had literally millions of dollars throughout their career and left with nothing. Um, and then I, I've known guys that have sort of been that, middle tier and just the sort of a journeyman that have finished their careers and, and gone into post career. And that, that was actually better than mm. that's better work. They're doing better work now than what they actually had in their career. So it goes both ways. I've seen some horror stories where that's what we're trying to catch now before we go into it. You know, uh, I've had, I've had teammates that have sort of passed away past footy that I've played with. Um, and that's always in the back of my mind. So instead of having stories where I've helped them, I'll just try and, build them little blocks, little blocks, education. So, you know, we play for 10 years and then 30 years post. So just making that transition a bit softer is um, mm. what, what's in the back of my mind instead of saying, oh, you know, I've, I've really had an impact on that guy. Because um, that, that could be a tiny little thing that you never never see or hear. It's just you know that they're in a better space, you know. But, um, yeah, we, we, mate, I'm really passionate about this space because, like I said, I've had teammates that have, have passed away post-footy. I've had stories where guys have struggled after footy with gambling or um, you know, I'd hate to see the divorce rates after footy and, and that, you know, it's easy for society and that to say, oh yeah, it's easy, you know, the fame and that's gone, the money's gone, the, the missus takes off, but it's not that, it's the fact that their partner used to be driven, used to be happy, um, all mm. these things, you know, present really like a, a role model and then all of a sudden they're grieving, they're literally grieving from their career and then they're different. They're, they're probably feeling a bit depressed, get angry, um, you know, and we always try and look for that thrill of what we had playing footy, chasing that adrenaline and that dopamine. So then when you're not getting it, things like, you know, drinking, gambling, you know, all them sorts of things start to, that, that's where you get your thrill from and it's a bit of a slippery slide, you know. So um, there is, there, there's so many things that can impact that. Um, but one thing I've learned a lot is the NRL do put a lot of resources in it, into it. Which is great, and I'd, I've I've spent a lot of time looking into other sports, both in Australia and the US. How do and we compare? I, I can strongly say, hand on my heart, and this isn't being biased. That world leaders, NRL, are like the resources and that they're putting in, unbelievable. And we're still trying to get better and better at that space. Um, one thing about the well-being space is, 
I could walk in to say Parramatta with Dave Gower tomorrow and there wouldn't be any questions about why I'm there. It's like, it's mm. sort of, and vice versa, if well-being staff walk through here from another club, no one would question it. Whereas yeah. if it was a defensive coach or something, you'd be saying, well, what are they doing there? So across the game, we, we do have the player in mind and, and the outcome is what we want. We have them in mind. So we, as a collective, we all share ideas and mm. it's a really good space. And I think we're, we're leading the way in that. You're doing a great job, mate. And, and I hope um, it's really, it's, you could talk all day about it. It yeah. is really interesting. And you, as you said earlier, I think you touched on, you feel like <clears throat> back here, you really have a purpose. Yeah, mate. Yeah. I, I love it. And I love the club as well. I, I was fortunate enough to play here. And, mate, when I walked in, I, I'll be honest, it probably wasn't the prettiest place. And, I, you know, I was, when I was walking, I was like, what, what am I doing? You know, just the facilities and that sort of stuff. But mm. the people really made me feel welcome. And it's the same today. Um, it's, it's a great club full of great people and mm. we're heading in a good direction. Well, forget the centre of excellence. The greatest assets are people. The people. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned you, you'll be on the phone. You'll take 2 a.m. phone calls. Does that apply to me if I, you know, you know sometimes I hike the Uber prices at 2 a.m. Like if I'm oh, out. No, about, no, no. So, you so come and get me. I, I do have a list of. Uh, who can call through my do not disturb Chris. So you get one chance at it too. So like if the boys want to play jokes and that they can, but they probably yeah. have to uh, ring Benji after that. So, okay. All right. Hey, uh, you know what time it is? Turnbuckle time. It is turnbuckle time, <laughs> my friend. Right now, we're going to throw you off the top ropes. Okay. Let's we're going to go. throw some questions, quick fire questions at you. Top score. Yep. So it's six questions, four points each. Six yep. fours are. What do you mean? Six times four. Is? No good is, it, is this a question? Wait, no. Hang on. Six fours are 24, right? Yeah. Plus the one bonus point. 24. Is 25 is your maximum well, score. I thought you okay. said 25 and then you come out with 24. Yeah. Well, you yeah. listen to it. Right. Right, let's go. So 25 max score. Yeah? yeah. Okay. You ready? Let's go. Okay. You ain't seen nothing like this. Pro Wrestling Australia presents Ringmasters at the Sydney Spiegelton, Friday, April 19. Tickets available now on Oztix PWA Ringmasters. This ain't no three ring circus. Question one, your NRL debut in 2007, it was against the Dragons, you lost, do you know the score? For memory, it was 28-16, Dragons. Correct. Yes. Keep the score. Yes. Uh, four points. Uh, in that game, can you name the Panthers teammate who played for the Broncos in our very first game as a club in 2000? The great man, Clive Luke Prittis. Boom. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Cl Clive Churchill medal. Yes. Well done. Absolutely. Uh, question three. Also in that game, yes. your debut, there was a Panthers teammate who made his NRL debut with West Tigers in 2001. A Panthers teammate in that game, your debut, who made his NRL debut with this club in 2001. You want a clue? It wasn't Sparky, was it? Marco Halloran? Correct. Yes. Boom. 12 yes. points. Question four. Your state of origin debut. So uh, 2012, game two, ANZ yes. Stadium, right? Robbie Farrow was your hooker. Yep. You beat Queensland. What was the score? Come on, Timmy. 18 12. So bloody close. 16 12. Yes. 16 12. You giving him that? Oh, Half, give him two. So what's he on? on? 14. 4 3 is 12 plus 2, 14. Question five. Good thing someone's good at maths around here. Your final NRL game, Panthers, round 12, 2019. Yeah? Yep. You went out a winner. You beat Manly, 15 points to 12. Yes. Which teammate in that game? Is playing for West Tigers this weekend. Your final game for the My Panthers. Final game for the Panthers. Round 12, 2019. Brent Naden. Boom. Yeah, Correct. It is. Brent Naden. Yeah. Where are we up to? 18. Going oh, good. Question six. Who's the only member of the coaching staff here at West Tigers who you have not played with? Okay. Um, sorry, Benji. Oh, I don't know. Yep. I won't get in. Well, played with Benj, played with Robbie, played one game with Hino. Bomber. 
Didn't Norman Morris with didn't play with Vom. Correct. Played with Simon Dwyer. Yes. So, at four, you're on 22. And a half. No, we gave you two points earlier. But you've got a bonus point question now. Yes. So, you can get 23, which yeah. if we take some points off Joel Kane, you still could be right up yeah. at the top of the ladder leaderboard. So, for your bonus point, Timmy, how's that clock going? Righto. Um, which Panthers teammate in your final game, Yep. when you made your, your last game, which Panthers teammate is playing his last season with the Panthers this year. James Fisher-Harris, as of today. Wow. This is true. Controversial, is it? It's true. No, that news has only been breaking when we recorded this potty. And, and the that, great, you're right. The great Jerome Luai. Boom. <laughs> Jerome the Luai Tigers. was the one I had. There you Jerome go. Luai and James Fisher-Harris. I should get an extra half You're point You're getting for that. two points for that. Yes, thank you. You are now on 24, I think it is. Hey, you've done well. Well, yeah. well thank done, you. Yeah. Hey, well done. Thank you. For a Blake that left school at 15 and was on the, the pick and shovel, yep. digging holes. Timmy, thanks very much for joining us, mate. Thank I you. really enjoyed the chat. Um, I hope you guys did it at home as well. We'll do it all again next week. A uh, huge weekend this weekend for our, our Harold Matts in West Magpies. Lisa Fiola as well. Um, Flag and Cup, they're playing at Blue Bet Stadium. Our boys, as we know, at Carrington Park yep. on Saturday. All the best to all you guys. Um, and then fast forward, our next home game, of course, um, that 25th anniversary match on Anzac Round against the Broncos at Campbelltown Stadium. So lots for us all to look forward to. Again, Timmy Grant, thanks very much for, for jumping on. And uh, we'll do it all again next week right here on Behind the Raw. Behind the Raw, the official podcast of West Tigers.